I'm Dan Crane. I deliver boats up and down the coast and do custom work in the local yards. My family's been making a living on these waters for over a century, and I'm proud to continue that tradition. For me, the water is a special place where I work, live, and play. Across the United States, recreational boating, tourism, commercial fishing, and other coastal industries provide over 28 million jobs. That translates into some eight to $12 billion each year. Keeping the water clean. It's important to our economy, but it's critically important to our natural aquatic environment and our enjoyment of the water. With over 10,000 marinas in the United States and over 22 million pleasure and work boats, we can make a big difference in reducing pollution and improving water quality. Keeping the water clean, that's where you and I come in, as recreational boaters, marina owners, or professional watermen. And we can do this by simply making small day-to-day -day changes in the way we maintain and operate our vessels. Let's face it, the care and feeding of most boats requires oil and gasoline, caustic chemicals, and other hazardous substances that can harm the water. In this video, we're going to focus on four main sources of potential pollution, fuel and oil, sewage, maintenance, and debris. We'll focus on each one in turn and then see what we boaters can do to help protect our waterways. We're all familiar with the damage caused by large marine oil spills. What you may not realize is that smaller spills from recreational and work boats can have similar effects. Most oil and fuel spills occur during the daily operation of our vessels. They happen during refueling, or when we pump oily ballast water, bilge water, or waste oil over the side. Many boaters try to clean up spilled oil with dishwashing detergent. This actually does more harm than good, and it's illegal. By itself, soap is a polluter, and when mixed with oil, it only compounds the problem. The detergent drags the oil below the surface and prevents it from evaporating. Eventually, the soap oil mix sinks to the bottom where it can damage aquatic life for fuel. Oil and fuel spills impact the economy and the environment. Oil lowers oxygen levels, degrading water quality. Oil damages fish eggs and clogs the gills of shrimp, crabs, and other shellfish. Oil and fuel spills also weaken and kill seabirds, as well as mammals that live in the water and need to swim on the surface. Coral is particularly vulnerable to oil and fuel spills because it's a living marine organism that can't swim away. Coral reefs are home to hundreds of aquatic species. Many are territorial, and when a spill occurs, they will not leave their polluted reef. Fuel and oil spills are also bad for business. Tourists and boaters alike have certain expectations for their time on the water, and these don't include oil slicks and the dead and decaying marine life they can cause. So, what can we boaters do? The potential for a fuel spill is greatest when taking on gas or diesel. Marinas can help by putting automatic nozzle shutoffs on their pumps. Attaching an inexpensive fuel recovery device to your tank's air vent can also help prevent spills. These devices cost less than $20 and can be purchased at most marine supply stores. The Coast Guard recommends filling your tanks to about 90% capacity. This prevents overfills and allows for future fuel expansion. You may also want to wrap a rag or an absorbent donut around the nozzle to soak up any overflow and protect your boat's finish. Now I want to show you some simple devices to contain fuel and oil spills in the build. Let's go on board. Hi, Chuck. I see you're installing those absorbent pads and booms. They do a great job of soaking up oil and fuel that may spill into the build. Once they're saturated, put the used pads and booms in a sealed container and take them to the oil disposal site at your marina. Sewage is another source of pollution that can have devastating effects on local waterways. It can cause waterborne diseases such as hepatitis, typhoid, and require beaches and shellfish beds to be closed. Sewage also produces oxygen-grabbing bacteria that can cause algae blooms and fish kills. So what can we boaters do? 
First off, it's simply illegal to discharge raw sewage overboard when operating within three nautical miles of the U.S. coast. And we have with us here Petty Officer Wright from the U.S. Coast Guard to give us the official word. Thank you, Dan. If you have a marine toilet installed on your boat, you must have a U.S. Coast Guard approved marine sanitation device to go with it, preferably a pipe free device such as we have here. Well, what about Y valves? Y valves serve the purpose of taking the raw sewage from the toilet to the valve and directing it overboard or into the holding tank. But it's prohibited to dump untreated sewage into the water when operating within three nautical miles of the U.S. coast. That's correct. So when the boater moves the Y valve into the inboard position, the sewage will go into the holding tank. In addition, if the boater is in a no discharge zone, this valve must be locked in place. Your marina pump out station is the place you want to dispose of onboard sewage. Recent increases in government funding have made pump out facilities much more available. If your marina still doesn't have one, now is the time to have it installed. Here are some other things you can do. Use your marina's restroom whenever your boat is at the dock. If you have a portable toilet on board, use a pump out station or bring it on shore for proper disposal. Vessel maintenance is another big area of potential water pollution. Maintenance requires paint, chemicals, and other harmful substances, which we definitely want to keep out of the water. So, what can we boaters do? Let's start with washing and cleaning. When you're selecting soaps and cleaners, choose the least toxic product to do the job. Look for the words biodegradable or phosphate free on the label. By the way, the same thing applies to chemical degreasers. If it's not harmful to humans, then it won't harm the aquatic environment. The particles that come off of boat bottoms can be especially harmful to the water. Make sure your marina has a catch basin or a collection system like this one to contain resins, chips, and other hazardous materials. Notice how he's using a vacuum collection system with the sander and tarps to catch any loose particles. This is the right way to do it. Keeping unwanted hitchhikers like these off of boat bottoms can seem like a never-ending task. We're all in search of the holy grail of anti-fouling paint that can keep a bottom clean and slick. In recent years, the industry has reduced the toxicity of marine bottom paint while preserving their longevity and anti-fouling benefits. When selecting a bottom paint, make sure you use one of these new varieties. Whenever your boat is out of the water and before you launch, Inspect through-hole fittings and hoses. Besides ruining your sailing season, a sunken boat fully loaded with gas and oil can create a substantial environmental hazard. On occasion, repairs are needed when underway. For example, you may need to free up a frozen winch, anchor windlass, or some other gear. Be sure to wipe up any excess lubricant with the rag. That keeps it from running onto the deck where it's a safety hazard and then draining over the side where it's a pollutant. Store soiled rags in a sealed container and take them on shore for cleaning or disposal. That brings us to our last problem area, debris. Out here on the water, floating debris can present an unhealthy image to tourists and boaters. Debris is also a serious threat to the aquatic environment and vessel safety. Plastic is especially troublesome. The very qualities which make it handy on land, it's lightweight, durability, and water resistance make plastic a serious hazard to our aquatic environment. Plastic trash can entangle and snare all types of aquatic species. It can also foul crops and clog intakes. So, what can we boaters do? First and foremost, don't throw debris overboard. Stow it away. And that includes cigarette butts. The filters are non-biodegradable, and their toxic chemicals can harm aquatic life that mistake them for food. Whenever you're afloat, practice plus one boating. That's bringing back the trash you took out, plus one piece someone else left out on the water.
Take care. All right, Dan. I'm glad to have you aboard. Oh, oh it was a great sale. Will do. Thanks a lot. By following just a few good practices, we boaters can do our part in preventing pollution from fuel and oil, sewage, vessel maintenance, and debris. This boating season, be sure to make pollution prevention part of your stewardship of the waterways.